Well, hello. Welcome to Laugh and Learn. I am your host, Flay Monroe, mm-hmm. along with my co-host who's sitting here next to me, the lovely Laurie Hoagie. <laughs> <laughs> so that is her name. We're also joined by our producer, Tribble, and our camera guy, who we love and adore, Kendall, the same. We love both our people. This is a team effort. We got another member, but we ain't bringing him in yet. He on the other side somewhere. <laughs> he probably jumping rope. How was your week, baby? Um, my week was actually good. Um, can't complain too much, you know. More importantly, how was yours? Let me start off by congratulating you and Nick for holding it down last week. Without uh, me, y'all did a great job. I actually looked at, okay, about 50% of the show. I, <laughs> you know, I never look at the whole show. And I never read the comments. Mm-hmm. But you guys held it. I told y'all y'all could do it, y'all. Y'all don't need me always. Plus, I'm on tour with Tiffany Haddish again. So, it's going to be a lot of Mondays. I ain't going to be here. I'll be somewhere else remotely. But I'm here today. Mm -hmm. You were missed. You were missed. Oh, and I was in Atlanta. I popped in last week, but I was in Atlanta working last week. I had a good week. (laughs) And it was a very exciting week as far as the news. So, we're going to get into it in a second. You going to bring in Big Nick? Yeah, sure. Mr. Nick Smith, Paging Smith, Paging Nick Smith. Hi, (laughs) Nick. Welcome back, Mother Flame. Oh, she back. Look, he, she, we back. He more he than she today, but he, she, we is back. Because, ooh, <laughs> we didn't put on no makeup today. I wasn't feeling it. It's okay. It's going to work today. Mm-hmm. Shit, it's going to work, Nicholas. How was your week? My week was good. It, it really was. I'm I'm down to the countdown. You all know that I've been kind of excited to go see my I got really emotional last week thinking about my mom. Uh, she's fine, but I'm just going to see her for in like two years. So I leave on Wednesday. And I'll be going to Chicago and um, spending the whole weekend and everything with my mom. Oh, my mama's birthday was yesterday. Happy birthday, Miss Valerie. <laughs> Miss oh, Valerie. I was looking at a picture of Miss Valerie. Look, it's so funny how we get older and they seem to get smaller. You notice that? Like, oh, well, I remember you revert. Valerie You're supposed to get more a, feeble. Oh, like she shrunk? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, she she's just a, a tiny now. I don't remember Valerie being that tiny. I'm like, wow, you towered over her. And I'm like, wow. I just remember, and I still remember Ralph as a baby. So it, clearly, it, Ralph is a grown man now with kids and everything. <laughs> forty two so or forty three. You know. That's so all. Valerie Valerie lost weight, but she ain't lost her mouth. For all that she lost in body weight, that mouth ain't changed. It's still 700 of nastiness, baby. 700 pounds. But Valerie light, baby Valerie reads everybody. That might be just genetics, right? I don't Apple know what you mean. Fall from the tree. I have no idea what you mean. I am the most pleasant person that I know. We didn't say anything <laughs> about you not being pleasant. I just said the apple doesn't Thank fall you. far from the tree. What are you? <laughs> um, uh, uh, flame ads. Y'all just gonna let me? Y'all gonna let them double team me? I'm just asking for a friend. <laughs> No, I, I, I didn't say a word. I didn't say a word. I know I you got emotional niggas, and I'm very. Um, Congratulations on you and Lauren having a successful show last week. That was good. I know you haven't seen your mama, and I know you're a big ass mama's boy. So I'm glad you're going to see Miss Rosetta next week because that's going to make your soul. That's going to do something for your soul. And uh-huh. my belly because we're going to eat too. You went out, boo. So, <laughs> I said, oh, no, and my belly because we're going. Weren't Every you day. just at a uh, eating biscuits this weekend? Mm-hmm. That's back to back. Uh oh. <laughs> take two, jump, take two jump. Take two jump ropes. Take two jump ropes. Exactly. <laughs> Uh-huh. Some right. double unders. <laughs> so exactly. hey, you guys, you know that this has been a week in America, as like always. And I don't know where we starting, but y'all lead it off because I'm ready to oh. chime me in. I want you flame mess to chime me in. Type in capital letters, please. Please put a bunch of flames. And the questions that you all want to ask, put them here in capital letters. Nicholas, when he goes out and comes back in, Nicholas will write down the pertinent questions and bring them out. Nicholas, write down the names of the person who said it, too, so we can re- re- repeat their names out loud. Because we, we might get a little deep today. Mm-hmm. Just a Got little it. bit. Though. I'm going to let Lauren get deep. Well, no, we're starting with uh, who you wanted to start with, uh, Senator Tim Scott. So go ahead. Let, let the people start. Before we start with Tim Scott, the negativity, let's start with the positivity of the wonderful speech that our president, President Joe Biden, has uh, came out. And to say that it was a wonderful speech might be reaching. It's not. I'm not going to say that it was a wonderful speech. But what it was was something that we had gotten unused to after four years. He spoke presidential. He spoke with political uh, uh, stature. He he spoke like he had some goddamn sense. He was calm. He was affectionate towards the American people, all people, not just Democrats. Um, He pushed his plan to say what he wanted and what he was planning on doing. And people are giving him backlash because in 100 days, he's not we don't see him enough. He's not making enough. He's not supposed to be making a speech every day. He's in a position where he is doing his job. 
Did you not watch me on They Ready when I said, do your job, player? Player is doing his job, so he does not have time to have a press conference every single day just because he wants to be on TV. So hats off to Joe Biden for making the speech. Yep. Yep, he stumbled in his words. I stumbled in mine. I've called all my kids the wrong names just this morning. Everybody got called. I called Jamarcus, Izzy, Izzy, Isaria. Yeah, so <laughs> Joe Biden, I'm with you, player. I understand that we all make mistakes and hiccups, and y'all just ready to throw him up under the bus. Now, the rebuttal from the response back from the GOP that the one black senator, senator Republican, the one black man that they got, the one black person, which happens to be Tim Scott, who volunteered to speak and came right out and said that America is not a racist country. Nigga, Stephen from Django still lives. You are the reason that we are even were even slaves because you got us caught up with that BS that you were speaking. I'm not buying it. You can't sell it to me, nigga. I was looking for the strings over your head connected to the marionette that was above you because <laughs> you were a puppet for the for those people. And you said, and then they tried to say that Kamala Harris said, I listened to Kamala Harris's speech. And she, to be fair, pretty much said the exact same thing, almost, except she said, but we cannot ignore the racial uh, um, history of this country. So she was acknowledging that she said that America was not racist. I understand her position and why she had to say that. You have to understand that she is the vice president of the United States. She can very well can't come on and say that the, America is a racist country, not if she thinks she's going to go any further. And order, y'all, how they always holler, you got to have a seat at the table. You want to have it in order for her to get to the dinner table. She has to play well and play right at the at the lunch table. She's at the lunch table trying to get to the dinner table. So she her her content and how she meant it was very different from how he meant it because they live very different lives but I understood I do not agree with our boss Charlemagne the guy who I adore calling Kamala a donkey the other day I do not agree with that but I'm not going to blast Charlemagne because that nigga could stop my checks <laughs> <Auntie> who, <laughs> I do agree with him calling Tim Scott donkey the other day so that's my piece. I'm going to let y'all have the intelligent part. I just had to say that part. I'll come back in with a funny later. Flame is, of course, talking about Joe Biden's first address to the joint sessions of Congress. Uh, it did draw 22.8 million viewers across seven major networks. Uh, but it was, however, Flame, a drop of 47 percent from 43 million or so who tuned in to the former president who was made for TV. Um, but from the polls taken after President Biden's uh, address to joint sessions of Congress, nearly two thirds of Americans are optimistic about the direction of the country. And they thought that his speech was presidential and that his speech was one of healing. Well, isn't that okay, what that we was need? a synopsis. What was your opinion? <laughs> <laughs> well, the deal is I don't necessarily uh, move in a space professionally where I, I have an opinion other than I'm like you all. I, I thought that um, and I still do. I think that that's a position that requires um, a level of temperance, a level of measure um, and one that uh, acknowledges the pain of other people, which is why I had issues with Senator Scott more, much more so than I did with uh, Joe Biden. I, I totally, um, and we'll get into Scott, and I won't, won't go there yet, but the speech itself, it was um, almost soothing in its uneventfulness. That makes sense? Yeah. 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 Because yeah, we I'm were like, so wow. used to, we had gotten so accustomed to the buffoonery every day from the last administration. So, yeah, we didn't want that. We wanted something new. And we got something new. And I need you guys to understand that he is still new. He is 100 days into this job. 100 and what, five, six, seven days? Yeah. Understand, give, yeah. him a t give him an opportunity to prove himself. Just like we're going to give Kamala an opportunity to prove herself. Y'all gave the other and one an opportunity for four history years. History was made, too. Yeah, and y'all gave him an opportunity for four years, and he still ain't proved shit. We still 560,000 dead from a pandemic that he did not address. So understand me. Yeah, ain't nobody dying. Well, people still dying, but not from that. And like we were saying, Lauren, history was made with both Kamala Harris and Nancy Pelosi, you know, there, uh, because we've never had these two women holding the top two positions of a succession of power. So this was history uh, made here in the United States. So these are my sentiments. Um, I do agree with you on the Joe Biden front. I think that we are so quick to um, attack or, you know, go after more so. I think the 
the Democrats more so than the GOP, unfortunately. And I understand that a lot of people are angry, but I think that people in a lot of ways forget the entire, we can call it a project, whether it's the economy, the immigration. There, there was a myriad of things that Joe Biden and Kamala inherited that were just terrible, just completely flawed that they're working through. I also find it very interesting that in Joe Biden's speech, when he was talking about things for families and, you know, just providing actual resources to people that are in need, especially during this COVID pandemic, all of the GOP was sitting down. Nobody was clapping. Shoot, Ted Cruz was falling asleep. So I think that was deplorable. And I think I hope people pay attention to that. On the remarks of saying that America isn't racist, I'm, I'm a little, um, I'm a little bothered by it. I'm not gonna lie. I know, Flame, you and I kind of talked about it. Uh-huh. I understand why it may seem like Kamala needed to say that, but because she's trying to get the seat at the table, sure, totally acknowledge that. But I think the flip side to that is that's not why she was elected. We elected you because we wanted you to hold people accountable and you kind of being a flip flopper in that space because you got to do what you need to do. I understand why a lot of people are coming after her for that, because you are the first woman of color to be sitting in this seat. And one of the and after a first major address, you come out and say America isn't racist, but we're going to acknowledge all of its. We're going to acknowledge the racist past of America. It's like. Mm, So, I mean, I even sat there and I was like, okay, maybe she approaching this from a psychological standpoint, saying like the country can't have feelings. I really tried to dissect what she was saying. I was really trying to figure it out. So I'm I'm a little uneased by it. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. But I'm also a person that is very much so of actions speak louder than words. So although she said that. I want to see what she does on the front of, I know she's at um, at the helm in terms of the, the George Floyd bill that's trying to be passed. She's been at the front forefront of the um, anti-lynching bill with Emmett Till. So her actions have definitely spoke louder than these past words that she said, but I, I'm, I'm just, I'm a little, I'm a little uneased by it. I'm not going to lie. You know what too though, Lauren, I think the other reason I give Kamala not a pass, but I look at it differently. Kamala was asked a question about responding to something that he said. She didn't introduce this. Tim Scott came out of nowhere saying, oh, and by the way, grocery list, barbershop, dry cleaning. Oh, and race in America is not a racist country. Like, whoa, where did that come from? It came out of nowhere. So now I'm in a position as Kamala where I've got to respond to something that they said and try to maybe because what I felt like Tim Scott did not do. He can very well feel like it's not a racist country then you have a responsibility to explain to me why you feel like it's not a racist country. And I don't feel as though he did that. I feel as though as an elected official, he has a responsibility to acknowledge the pain of his constituents. And I felt like it was such a dismissal to just say, America's not a racist country. Well, he don't give a... F- <laughs> First of all, let's, let's start at that source, nigga, because I love the point that you w- w- came with that. Now, that was a good point. But this nigga don't care. This nigga don't even know that he's a black man. Let me understand that they, he is a pawn for the GOP. They don't give a damn about this clown. Didn't you hear me tell you I was looking for the strings because somebody was above his head making somebody put a meme up from the, the Fat Albert, the, uh, and he was one the one with the who wore the, the hat with the <laughs> with the eye. Tim Scott looks just like that goofy dork. He looks no, like you know a who black. He, you know who he reminds a me of? Patrick from uh, SpongeBob. He looks like a black starfish. You know he who does. he reminds me of? You guys ever seen that episode of uh, the Dave Chappelle Show? Where Dave Chappelle doesn't know that he's black in the skit and he keeps yelling white power. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That, that's Tim Scott. That's Tim Scott. Ridiculous. Tim Scott is the reason we are fucking slaves. Let me say it. And tell the nigga I said it. Because they caught a goofy ass nigga like that who had no backbone, no spine, who was nothing. Captured him. Gave that nigga a chicken sandwich and say, where they at? He brought him right to us. We've been over here ever since with fighting for damn chicken. You know you how much you love chicken, niggas. <laughs> I don't like the fact that this nigga volunteered to speak. Of all the Republicans that could have speak, you could have got Lindsey Graham. You could have got bootleg ass Ted Cruz, who was only falling asleep because he giving them payback because when he spoke on the Congress floor for 24 hours or 27 hours, however long, everybody was asleep while he was n- repeating nursery rhymes mm-hmm. of green eggs and ham. That's, that's, that's payback. He was mad because people was falling asleep on his stupid ass. And I called him stupid because he's stupid and Texas, y'all keep voting for him and he's stupid. So what that means the ones who vote for him yeah uh baby let me tell you something tim scott is stephen from Django, and stephen from Django does not have to have a be a man we got uh uh 
Candace Owens, Stephen from Django. We got Angela Stanton. We got Van Jones. It's so many iffy niggas. We got uh, uh, Kanye West, who now is not only uh, a sellout, but divorced. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it, 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 it is disheartening for young black men to see this man on TV and disregard and dismiss his own people for what? A check for some power because Tim Scott, when they're done, when it's all said and done, you are just the ignorant nigga in the room that they can control. That's what you don't understand about who you are. You are the ignorant nigga in the room that they can control. Period. Well, on that note, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, let's bring in some flame heads to kind of see uh, like we can let them sound off. Because mm-hmm. I'm ready today, baby. <laughs> mm-hmm. Hi, Texas. Hi, Dawn. How y'all doing? Good. How are you? Can you, I'm we, good. Can y'all hear me? We hear yeah, you. Yeah, we can fine. hear you. We can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> I was um I was chiming in with y'all were talking about the uh, presidential speech. I didn't listen to him because I'm a little upset about what's going on right now. I heard what um uh, our VP said. I understand what you were saying, Flame, but I just feel like the vice president is black when it's convenient. Mm. That's my opinion. But Don and, and, and Don now you know I was team. I didn't want Kamala Harris for president. But when she became and when she got put in that position, it was it was the lesser of two evils for us. A and then B. Uh, now mind you, Don, you work you work for and you know who you work for. If she would have came out and put them on blast, they already was against Kamala Harris. You got to understand that there is a bigger picture and a bigger fish for her to fry. So I get how she, what she said. And then uh-uh. right after she said it, she did say, but we cannot negate the racist history. So what she was trying to do was appease everybody. I get that part. Yeah. His, the way yeah. he said it did not mean it the way she said it. Even though they said the same thing, the, the content was different. But, but what my biggest thing is, when he got up there in his acceptance speech, he said, the, uh, President Biden said, the black community, black people, you got me in. I won't forget. Well, we still wait. Well, he only been in 108 days. But let me. OK, so <laughs> let me let me interject really quick, Don, though. So I want to say that I think that the flip side of this is to Don's point. Joe Biden acknowledged that he got black people elected, right? Uh, the anti-lynching mm-hmm. bill still hasn't been passed in the mm-hmm. last hundred days. Mm-hmm. The Asians got a hate mm-hmm. crime bill passed in these past 100 days. Mm-hmm. Um, what's been done for the black community so far? Nothing. And Nothing. Th- and, and that's the problem. And I would also say, too, is we talking about Kamala Harris appeasing people. The GOP has never tried to appease anyone except protect their own party. So why do we constantly have to fall on the sword? And why do we have to constantly appease the other side when they don't do the same thing for us? That's what makes Democrats right. look weak. But, but, and yeah. so and the here Democrats it is. Democrats are not doing anything either for us. And there it Neither is right party. there. And there it is right there, Dawn. That's what Neither exactly what I was about to say. Anything because I'm every week we're on the news. Some poor person gets stopped and they end up dead. Why aren't they protecting black people from these cops? Why aren't they doing that? Well, we've been well, talking about police they, reform for a minute, but the oh, point yeah, ju- the point that you just said and the point that you just made. So I get what Kamala, I get, I ain't giving Kamala a pass. I understand that, but I don't want her removed out of position because she wants mm-hmm. to, she will speak the way we want her to now. We also don't have enough power to keep her there. If we not going, if they changing these voting laws in our faces, they are setting it up to in 2022 when the primary comes, it's going to be real shaky and bakey. And a lot of us will not follow through and do our due diligence. I completely agree with what you're saying. What have they done for the black yeah. folks? But the but, GOP, you know but wait a minute, but the GOP fights when it comes down to to uh, Republican stuff. And the, and the Democrat, we don't, don't we, uh, we scatter. Exactly. We don't fight. We have don't to stand on enough. this. You know, and, and 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 let me tell you something. He signed a uh, an ex- executive order protecting protecting the transgender. No problem. But you black before you're transgender. I've been saying that for two yeah. years. That's 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 <laughs> the know, word, Don. And, and yeah. I, I, I don't have a problem with him signing bills to protect anybody. But it seems as though the people that put him and put people in office, not just him, but starting on the lower level, they never forget. They never remember about the black community. And let me tell you something. If he does not sign and he see what he's doing is that George uh, Floyd bill, he pushing it on Congress. No, you don't have to. You can sign that bill. 
But what's going to happen, y'all can mark my word, if he doesn't do anything to protect black people, Kamala won't get in in 2024 because I'll be the main one not voting. I said it. I said what I said. Well, let's not do like that, Don. No way. No, 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 no. I, I, I don't no, agree man. with that, Don. I don't. I got to say, not, I don't agree with that. Black people not going to vote, Lauren. They not going to vote. But see, that's, the, that's also the problem, though, that I will say on the flip side. I'm going to play devil's advocate all day today. Mm -hmm. That's okay. my issue, too, on the flip side is, is when black people say, oh, our votes don't matter. If our votes didn't matter, they wouldn't be trying to suppress our votes so hard. They wouldn't be putting all of these bills into it. So yeah. just because we may not just because we may not get something that we want now, what's the lesser of two evils? Having another Republican in that seat or having somebody on our side but, that has a little more work to do? But he ain't doing nothing. He ain't on our side because he hasn't done anything to help us, Lauren. He has not done anything. I understand that, I, and I understand the frustration, but it's still only been 106 days. I, okay, but he got how many days left? But why? that's the first thing you should have done when you got in office. When you signed the executive order to protect the trans people, transgender people and the Asian people, black people, well, we should have been number one, but mm -hmm. you should sign one for black people. And it seems as though nobody, everybody forget about the black people. Do you honestly think them old white folks care about the um, Emmett Till bill? It's been 50 years. They can go another 50 years. They don't care. As if they can kill black people, they're doing it already. What do they care? I, 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 Dawn, I hear you. I know exactly where you are, but I'm telling you right now, we, we can't push not, not voting. Understand me, Dawn, that if we wouldn't have voted this time, we couldn't survive. We would not have survived another four years of Trump. We would not have survived it. I totally agree with you, Flame. I'm not going to argue with you on that. I totally agree. But he's not doing what he should have done in the very first two weeks in office. Because we're the ones that got him in. They, oh, if it wasn't for Stacey Abrams, none of this would be going on. Well, he's still in a position where he is not in total control. You know, he still got to go through loops. And even though he's the president of the United States. And what it looks like is that Trump did whatever he wanted to do. But Trump also had all his cronies in positions of power that made it right. easier for his stuff to get passed. See, this right. goes back to what don't, what you have said, what uh, Lauren has said, what Dawn has, I mean, uh, what Allison has said. We got to start locally in order to get people into positions that when we get to federal. See, exactly. he, he was pushing all those people. Every day he would come on and every day there was a killing or he would come on and say something outrageous or do something outrageous. The, and the entire time while we were sitting here watching him on the news with our mouth open, flabbergasted, the GOP was implementing, putting judges, putting senators. They were moving in spaces quietly that we were so busy watching this clown on TV and they were putting, they were setting it up. Pay attention that it's set up for 2022. They're trying to make some moves. So we cannot throw out all this infighting, Dawn. I hear you, Dawn. I'm telling you, sister, you I'm know I'm with you. But if we don't stop I'm infighting, we're going to lose again. But we're going to lose majorly next time. We're going to really well, lose majorly next time. They don't get off their butts and do something for black people. Not people of color, black people. They always want to loop everybody together. No, because you don't loop black people when you're killing us. That's the truth. I'm not saying I'm not voting, Flame. I'm just not voting for them. I'm not voting for them because they are totally wrong in what they're doing to us. They're well, totally wrong. Well, who are you going to vote for then, Don? Shoot. <laughs> I, I, I don't have to vote in the presidential. I can vote on the state level and for other things that's going to that's gonna be going on. I don't have to vote in the presidential uh, election. See, no, that's the problem. You still got to uh, vote. I, I, you still got to no, vote, Don. I, I can't get with I'm, you on that one. Mm -mm. I'm, I'm just now. Uh, who the... Well, we'll just have to see in 2020, what, 2024? Yeah. Yeah. We'll have to hide. Because honestly, not voting at the presidential level is how we got Donald Trump elected. That's oh exactly how God. he got elected. Listen, Dawn, just have a little patience. I promise you. I think that yeah. things will, I think that things are going to get better. I'm telling you, it is, we, he can't make it happen overnight. It, we expected the same thing from Obama. We expect the same thing from President oh, Obama. I knew he gonna do nothing because they had a republican senate i knew that wasn't gonna happen well this but is you, what i'm saying we still right there with has, joe biden he but got, he has the house and the senate now he no we he has the house and we're tied for the senate and with the house we just lost 11 seats they're predicting that we're going to lose 11 seats i'm telling you his hands are tied oh, as well okay. Because okay. people, because of the census report. So they said we're about to lose 11 seats. Yeah, 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 yeah. I did hear that. 
We'll we, see y'all. Yeah. We're going to hide and watch. And if I'm wrong, I'll be on the next It ain't about, it, it, we don't want you to be wrong. We want you to be patient and we still want you to vote. Because yeah. I may be I'm, wrong. I'm going to vote. Okay. I, I'm going to vote. We're just going to see who's going to be the players in 2020. Girl, you're going to make me run. Let me get these, let me get these titties <laughs> straight. Let me you run. Know what, you know what, Flame? And I'll vote for you. Because you know what? You make more sense and you talk more practical than, the, see, I don't like these politicians because all they talking is bullshit. Don't don't talk don't talk. I can smell it. You know. I no. I rather you tell me no. No, we ain't doing that shit, Don. We're not doing that. Then to tell me, well, no. The hell with y'all. Okay. That's bullshit. Well, thank you, Don. Think. We girl. Yeah, we. You came with we it. We appreciate you. Bring in my ten dollar pimp. Oh, okay. Oh, and bring in Allison, too. Let's do both of them. Hi, folks. Hi, hey, Allison. Allison. Hi. So, listen. And I'm going to pre... Oh, hi. Uh, hi, Bobby. How are you? So, let me... Hi. Let me just, because I was listening to uh, Miss Dawn. Okay. Yes. Understand this, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, I understand what Kamala said, but Flame, I'm with you. She has to play the game, right? Do I agree with what she said? Do I believe she could have said it differently? Yes, she could have, right? Because she had put the context differently. Yes, she could have, right? But that's neither here nor there, right? I want to get on, ladies and gentlemen, how important, and I'm going to keep preaching this until somebody say, Allison, shut up, right? If you understand your local election, right? Don keeps saying, well, what is the, what are they doing for black people? Do you know your city commissioners, right? Who's affecting you every day. Your city commissioners tr controls your local government. They controls how much taxes you pay. They control, they control with your electric oh, bill, you right? They control <laughs> about, they control about your, 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 your hospitals and things of that nature, right? So those are the things that we as black people that we got to get firm in our local elections, because let me tell you something. If our local government start looking differently, Trust me, that federal is going to look differently because who's at the federal? Federal is who is who is who was once at your local. And I'll say this again. That's why Tim Scott is where he is, because we didn't take his ass. Excuse my language. We didn't take right. his ass out in a local election. And I'm not and I know I'm coming off aggressive, but understand something, ladies and gentlemen, let's get out this. Well, what are they doing for black people? No. What is going on in your local community that's affecting you every day? Because that's why we're upset. Because we're paying too much taxes. Why on one side of the river, uh, on their side, they beautifying, right, and preserving. But on our side, where our grandmamas and aunties live, right, they they, they pushing us out and displacing us. And let me tell y'all something else. Y'all see how we're online right now? Right. We're in a global we're in a global market we're, we're our world is globally. Do you know how many of our grandmothers and aunts and mom, mothers couldn't go to the doctor during COVID because uh, they didn't have broadband system with the Internet in urban communities. Right. So how and, and, and our, we are online now. Our babies are online. A lot of our students weren't even able to get access to the Internet due to the LTE and the fiber lines that they put around our neighborhoods. Right. To allow us to get access to Internet. So see, ladies and gentlemen, before we start saying what is Biden doing for black people, what are we doing in our local community to ensure our babies and our grandmothers and our youth is able to have access to the things that they need? We got to start in our local community. That's what we need to take the frustration. Tell it, Miss Allison. God damn it. You I'm better speak it. Mm -hmm. I'm telling y'all. And no, Miss Dunn, I'm not coming for you. And I, I'm not with that. I'm just about educating my people because it is time for us to cut this foolishness out. What are we, who are we holding accountable in, at, on our city commissioner? Are we holding our mayors accountable? Because let me tell you something, in different states and in different cities, we all get a different, well, they all get a different uh, salary to sit on these boards. And that's coming from your tax dollars. Understand this, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that goes to even the voting rights bills that are constantly coming up now in these different states. Absolutely. So, yeah. Absolutely. Because y'all just, pay just got one passed. You just got one passed in Florida. Y'all just got that voting bill passed with DeSantis in Florida. Sure, it's illegal to protest in Florida now. You can get arrested now, for that. They also passed the HB1 bill. Well, Allison, what is that? That's the anti-rioting bill, right? right? You can get a third degree felon behind that. 
And you know where that happened at? You know where he signed that at? Right where I'm, I am running in the at Lakeland at, for Lakeland City Commissioner, right there in Lakeland, Florida. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, we have to know this stuff. Mm -hmm. We can't sit around and say what Biden doing and what Kamala doing. Okay, the, she misspoke. Okay, she took it out of context. But how many times that old fool? How many times did Trump <laughs> you know, and, 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 and say all type of crazy stuff? Right, Ooh. and he was excused. We are, and you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and say this, and I may not have too many people who like me today, but let's stop putting our foots on black women so much. Let's mm. stop. Let's stop putting our feet on each other so Ooh. much. My God. Okay, she misspoke. She said something out of context. My God, forget mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Forget it. And remember what about your local community. And remember that. And the remember the position that she is in, and how much juice that she has, and has talked about doing, and is making things happen, starting with border patrol. See, we get. I'm, I'm with you, Allison. Yeah. L take their feet from the fire. Give them an opportunity to prove their worth that they can do this job. It's not even a hundred right. days. You can't always do it in a hundred. Shit, I couldn't do. I couldn't do my job Shit, in a hundred days. Do it in a year. Flame. Right. Your emotion, your we your 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 tenacity it. is yeah. what is needed in the Democratic Party. If they were as passionate as you are right now and put up a fight because they all act like pussies to me. Let me just say what I see. The Democratic Party need to get some backbones. Y'all need some balls. You can borrow mine if you need to. But y'all need some balls because this is why the GOP keep dominating us because they're not afraid to speak. They're not afraid to say how they feel. And then when they get aligned, they all stay aligned on one thing. It's one thing. Money, power. Democrats. Well, Every I mean, damn well. Well, I think you can even take the fact that you still have the GOP rooting for Trump and saying that the election was fraud. And it's been how many months later? And they're still in alignment Isn't that with the that. Truth, I yeah. was listening to all the shows and each show, every show, Face the Nation, Meet the Press, Cuomo, they're, they're all saying that they're still, he still hasn't conceded. And, you know, I, I do. Um, well, John, I want Don to vote, period, because if we don't vote, that vote goes to the other side. Well, we don't, you know, it, it's, it's a vote for, let's say it's Trump who moves up again. It's a vote for Trump. Um, and I do think, I mean, I understand the frustration. I would want to see something concrete being done, but, but he really is, but just in back channel ways. Like Allison just mentioned, he's he's trying to improve the infrastructure for the, for, you know, urban areas and areas that don't have, have money. Of course, we're, we're still um, arguing on what infrastructure actually means, but he's just not doing it out front, you know, like big, big flourishy stuff. He's doing more from from the back end, the schooling, the two, two, two years of school. I love that American family plan he's putting in. Fingers crossed he gets all that stuff done. That's that's monies that are going to lower child care. Um, Allison, if you don't stop smacking on that bag, girl, thank while you, we you crunching it. We got all this background noise, girl. Stop. <laughs> I want to see what she's eating. I'm hungry. She's eating Chick Fil A. <laughs> yeah. Girl, you know you can't eat Chick Fil A on my platform. You know they don't like us. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't be silly. But he's trying to get like two two hundred million uh, billion, excuse me, um, passed for for preschool for the kids. So he's doing it. It's just not as flashy. And, uh, you know, I, I, I wish there were other ways that he was doing it, but he is doing stuff. He's just not. He's not hitting the big, the big. Well, um, well, I want to say this, too, though. And Allison, please feel free to chime in. I think. Also, at least because, like I said, I work for a nonprofit and we do a lot of advocacy work. I think the other thing that's important is that at, even at the local level and the state level, a lot of people don't know what's in certain bills. They hear, you know, right. more so of the big pictures of things mm -hmm. and, you know, maybe some major initiatives that we just see on the news. But people actually don't know what's in bills. So while a lot of people may feel like, you know, which I can understand the sentiment of black people haven't been necessarily a priority in this new administration yet. There have been some strides that have been taken too. for the black. I wasn't saying that. No, 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 not at all, Bobby. I'm just saying in general, it goes to what Allison has been saying is that we need to do more research because there have been small strides and I, I am calling them small strides in some bills right. um, at the, you know, at this, well, not at the state level, but more so from. <laughs> Don't do that. Somebody said something about me smacking. <laughs> Not on laugh alone. <laughs> um, but there it has been some strides that have been taken in some of these federal bills, but I just don't feel like we're actually doing the research and actually investigating them. Allison, please chime in. Right. So and, and see, this is and, and see, I teach children, so y'all please forgive me if I if I if I am breaking it down like you all are children. No, right? we no, want it. No, just no, like no, that. Please no. Do, not at all. Um, Pretend so, I'm in so, kindergarten. <laughs> so, see, let me let me explain something to you on what I tell my children all the time. Read. What? Do not believe what nobody tell you. 
go read it for yourself. Because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, your understanding, my understanding, the way I process it, the way Lauren processes it, the way Flame is going to process it, we're going to process it all differently. And the reason why, because research tells us we've all had different backgrounds, right? We were all raised in different states. We were all raised by different people, right? So our process mm-hmm. is going to be different. Go read it for yourself. It's available information. But also with the bills, Lauren, as you stated, again, I say go read them. But that's why you have, you put and you vote the right people into office to be able to break these bills down to you. Yep. Right? It is there. It is your local state representative to break bills down to you. It is your it is your local government uh, um, uh, uh, job to break these bills down to you, to know what's being signed. You should never see in your paper or on your phone, oh, this bill was signed today. And, and you know who you should hold accountable for that? The, your congressman, mm-hmm. right? Or your state representative, because there should never be, there should never be a day that you, that I, that I looked at my phone and found out, oh, Rev- uh, Reverend, Lord, I'm about to call this man a <laughs> Reverend, but uh, Governor Ron DeSantis is in my city signing a signing an hb1 bill yeah right in my city giving my city for 42.1 million dollars for a park no not when we not when we have children who can't access internet but y'all giving it to a park so who do i blame i blame the local commissioners i blame the state representatives so yes that is why i say read it for yourself ladies and gentlemen because nobody Nobody in this world can can tell you anything uh, because you read it for yourself. It is your own understanding. In the Bible, it talks about not to get spiritual. Lean out on your own understanding. That means read it for yourself. <laughs> what Thank you. I, but, you I, but what I if I can't read? Answer. What if I can't read? What if I read numbers and you know signs and symbols? Okay. What if, <laughs> well, you know what? That is that is that is that is good, Flame. I'm glad. Can you hear? Can you hear? Right. So guess what? Put it on. I'm about to say we got audio, we got audio books these days. That's right. And Allison, <laughs> right. you know that's Put my motto. Audio. Do you see what I see? I ask my listeners that all the time because I see the same thing y'all see. But do you see what I see? Because I see it happening right in our faces. That's why my my motto is pay attention because a lot of us are just not paying attention to what is happening right in our faces. And I love that we got such diversity coming onto the platform, whether it's coffee time or here at Laugh and Learn, to show the differences. Bobby, if we had if we had forty percent of white people that was fair like you just fair it's not even about not being racist it's just being fair this country will be in a better place and Mm -hmm. thank you bobby for just acknowledging that a person is a person you know i don't know how you could teach that to your other to other people but i don't understand i'm not understanding the racism and the more and more the older i get i don't understand how i don't like you because your skin color is different from my skin color i don't understand that i just don't yeah. Well, no, we appreciate I, I you both. We really do. But look at the American Family Plan, everybody, because this is also he really wants to expand the nutrition for kids that are uh, food insecure. So we really want to push this uh, when when we do come up in twenty twenty two for elections. Make sure that the people you're voting for believe in us. What is it's that? Really Becky? important. It's- no, it, food insecure no. means you have a lack of access to food. Oh, I thought you meant for, uh, I, I, she said food insecure. I thought she said food, food obesity. Is, is that yeah. what you thought? Yeah. yeah, I thought she was somebody. Woo! I was like, your Woo! little fat ass you just need to stop Woo! eating. You should get your little fat ass away from the table. She, when I don't want, when I don't want to gain weight, away. No, I just No, for the kids who don't have a table. For the kids who don't have a table. Lord. We want to make sure that they're getting something yeah. when their family can't provide for them. I was one of them. Bobby, I was one of them. I was one of them kids. We didn't have a table. We didn't, sometimes we didn't have people. Sometimes you ain't had no food in the refrigerator. Baby, sometimes we didn't have a refrigerator. My mom was on drugs for years yeah. and years and years. So I get it. This and would, I know this would help you. Being out of school, yeah. a lot of those kids can't eat. They only would eat when at they school. Went to school. So yeah. I get that. Yeah. I get that. You're, you're exactly right. And this would help like send them home with meals for yeah. anybody that's under 18 within their home. At least that those kids would be eating at night and they don't have to wait that. until next morning. Mm-hmm. So important stuff. important stuff. And the only thing I want to say about Scott, just my second. I feel like he was being so used and he missed it. The one thing that blew my mind in, in um, the president's speech is when they said that they wanted to, he wanted wow. to lower kids' poverty by 50%, and not one Republican, including him, clapped. And Tim Scott supposedly was raised in poverty. Mm-hmm. He doesn't think that's important. 
And this is why like, this that's and that is why it was so easy for him to sell his soul for yeah. a dollar, Bobby, because he has well, sold I mean, his soul. That's exactly. Aren't you feeling a little used, Flame? Like when you look and say, "Why am I? Why am I being the only one to?" The measure, I'll, just, I'll, 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 I'll say this. I'll say this. Um, all skin folk and kin folk, we know that very well. And sometimes, oh. people that may look like us feel more comfortable around people who look like you, Bobby. Mm. And that's what it is. He's more comfortable being accepted by folks that look like you and not by his own king folk. That's just what it is. Right. And let me just say this. Well, I, I'll I, I just, come on, oh, I was going to say, I'm not even doing color. I'm just doing party. Like, shame on them. Mm -hmm. You don't want... The king. That, just, nigga, don't that nigga volunteered to speak. He knew yep. he was a sellout-ass nigga from Jump. Come on with it, Allison. <laughs> uh, so I'm just going to leave off with this. And, and since we talk, you know... And let me just say this to the to black folk, because, you know, I'm a teacher and one of my students uh, was shot in the head on Saturday, shot mm -hmm. an innocent bystander. Let me tell us mm -hmm. parents something. You all keep the in, educate your children, educate yourself and educate your children. Right. Because our children are dying, not just by the police, but by the hands of our own. Mm -hmm. Right. So ensure that we have a handle on our children, encourage your children for it to, it to be educated. You know what I mean? That school is important. There is no other way, you know, make your children read. I can't stress that enough. And, and listen, ladies and gentlemen, because we're not dying just by the hands of the police. We're dying by our hands as well. So keep hold to your babies, educate your babies, encourage your babies to be educated and stay in this fight. Because I'm telling you, even after me, somebody else going to have to come after me. And it's, and, it's the te and it's the children that I'm teaching, which is why I'm in the classroom. So yes, you all stay encouraged. Thank you, Flame. Thank you all. Great conversation. No, no. So follow Allison at Allison Lewis Lakeland. She's running for city council in Lakeland, Florida. So if you guys are in that vicinity, please do. You can donate to her uh, to her campaign. What's your cash app? What's your, how we donate, Allison? It's, it, you all, I'm going to put it in the um, chat. It's Al Lewis campaign al lewis campaign yeah and you should be able to write off this chick-fil-a lunch as a business lunch <laughs> a number four or a number two i like a number four myself we love you bobby clifford oh we love thank you. you bobby wait nicholas allison. we're gonna say something come on with it nigga. Yeah, allison two things you said that i just absolutely love because i always get flame knows this i get criticized this for all the all the time i love that you said we've got to stop putting our foot on the necks of black women like i really that that just resonated with me because i feel like the criticism kamala has gotten for just speaking and being asked a direct question has just been uh vicious right but going back to something else you also talked about starting local and what has Joe Biden done for black people? There are two things, and Lauren and I have talked about this, that I think is overlooked, but I think it's important. He immediately reversed the decision for prisons for profit. Like, that, that you can't do that anymore. And there have been pr prisons that have been, I believe, no, I don't have evidence of this. I think that they have profited from incarcerating men of color and people of color. Um, and so when you have a prison system that is built on profit, I think that that works against the idea of reformative behavior. You mm -hmm. know, uh, I think that it then becomes if it's for profit, you're clearly not doing both. And the other thing that Joe Biden did that I also think is in equally important. He immediately came in and he reversed President Trump's 1776 commission, which said that the Civil Rights uh, Act uh, never should have happened. So I think that those things are, to me are, are substantive and, and, and they matter. And you're right, Bobby Clifford, they're not as flashy as uh, some of the other things that I think people want to see. Of course, we'd love to see uh, something anti-lynching. I don't I don't see that being the pressing issue right now, but I do see infrastructure being the pressing issue. The fact that there are people who are still living in communities who don't have access to the internet is absolutely ridiculous in the richest country in the United States. I'm off my soapbox. That's it. Since you guys mentioned uh, Joe Biden and he mentioned the transgender community and he said specifically the transgender community, I applaud you for that because most of the presidents, including Obama, would just say LGBT. What you guys don't understand is that the LGBT and the trans community are two very different entities. I know that sounds like Flame, what are you talking about? The gay community and the trans community are two very separate entities, and you have to be a part of it really to know that, that, that they treat the trans community like the bottom of the barrel. They really do. So for him to acknowledge us was a wonderful thing. I just hope that the trans community, my brothers and sisters, don't jump 
on the bandwagon as soon as he make a mistake or he falls short of something that he said he would do to help us and he doesn't follow through in a timely fashion for you all and y'all throw him up under the bus because we are notorious for turning on people who are trying to help us because they didn't move fast enough for our pace let me just say that and that's a fair assessment if you don't like it you know i don't give a fuck so yeah come on with it because y'all ain't gonna do shit you know what you could do you mad at me you know my motto kiss my straight in the face wait a minute what happened lauren (laughs) <laughs> Nothing. I think I think all of this conversation is um, a good segue to talk about. We, we're just going to talk about topics that matter. So ooh, I think we ooh. need to talk about these voting rights bills before uh, we ring be, off. Today. Well, we since we to. on transgender, can we stay on that one, please? So I can get this out. Uh, you well, know you what's coming show, on. Yeah. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> of course. So since we're speaking about clowns oh, like, for the GOP. So you know, and, and be, yes, I've got breaking news for you to share. Just oh, tell it. Ahead. Tell it. Oh, well, um, it looks like Bill and Melinda Gates are splitting. Oh, okay. That's because Melinda didn't figure out that this nigga didn't uh, try to get rid of some people. Re- she might have been. Uh, what's Jeff uh, Bezos' wife's name? Right, I know. She just, yeah. she just joined the bandwagon. Jeff and realized- Bezos' wife's bandwagon. name is $60 billion. Exactly. Who gives a damn what her name is? She got $60 billion. Shoot, Melinda's okay. going to get the same thing. Melinda's going to get plenty of change. Let's go, and she know the secrets. Yeah, Uh huh. Let's go back to um, talking about the transgender community. And the second clown that they're using, the GOP is using. Now, the GOP ain't never cared about black rights, black equality, none of that. But y'all got Tim Scott speaking. Now y'all got Caitlyn Jenner, who is admitted an admitted uh, Republican and said it on Diane Sawyer to come out the woodworks to say that she's running for the governor for the state of California, the fourth largest economy locally, right? Oh, 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 everywhere, right? Isn't California Global, Global, governor? Yes. Yeah. Globally. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the word I was looking for. Thank you. See, I got caught up in, and I'm not Joe Biden. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got caught up in my words. It happens. But this clown, they are using her. They have never, Trump has never acknowledged her. She, oh, I want to have a meeting with Trump. She went to use the restroom at Trump Tower. Wasn't nobody there. Wasn't nobody in there. She had one person with her with a camera. I don't know whether she went to the men's room or the women's room, but the stuff that she is speaking now about, oh, the trans rights. The trans uh, athletes shouldn't f- fight against the women. I said that two years ago on The Breakfast Club. They are using everything that I said against me. <laughs> what, Caitlyn, not against me, to, to, to further their plight. Caitlyn Jenner, message to you, sweetheart. The only thing that you need to run for is to stop running over white women and getting away with murder in Malibu. Because that's exactly what she did. Then she went and got some titties to supersede it. I just want to get my hats off to Chris Jenner. Girl, you the biggest pimp money could buy. Good God. Well, I mean, for those who may be oh, wondering, yeah. Flame is talking about the California gubernatorial hopeful, uh, Caitlyn Jenner. Uh, she was asked yesterday or, or early this week her thoughts on uh, athletes, and she weighed in on her first issue. She said that um, she doesn't support trans girls born as boys participating in all female school sports. Uh, she believes that if you are you, if you are playing sports, you need to play in the sport of which you were biologically born. I mean, and we talked about that too. And honestly, I was surprised to hear uh, Caitlyn Jenner's response because I was like, I do agree with you. I do, because we've had that conversation. Well, on I this said show. that. She just stealing exactly. my shit. Okay, we, we, yes, Tell we, that we bitch. acknowledge that. I want that. my check, bitch. We acknowledge that. <laughs> we definitely acknowledge that. But I'm saying, though, I'm surprised that that was her response. So we'll, we'll give her they a are, well, there. Uh, you they, know, Lauren, they are segueing think, her to what they want her to be. Yeah, they, absolutely. She's going to say exactly what they want her to absolutely. say. Absolutely. I also think, too, and in many ways, it's, it, this is just me, of course. I almost think it's almost selfish, though, Lauren. Of course you can say that now. You are the most decorated athlete ever. You are. You literally you won. Mm. You literally won the Olympics in the sport that in the competition that requires you to be an athlete in every area. Swimming, running, jumping. You mastered it. So, of course, now you can come back and say, you know what? I think you should only be able to but, participate. Okay. And by fairness, but, she I, won, I, I she know, won when she that. was Bruce. Yeah. And she competed right. against men. So that's the thing. But I don't think I don't think but I don't think we should make that comparison because we also have to look at and I'm not defending Caitlyn Jenner. I'm just saying in general. I don't think it's fair. And I sent uh because I think Shauna Brooks came out and said something about that too. Mm-hmm. I don't think that it's fair to compare what Caitlyn Jenner did previously because being transgender dur- during those times was very different to what's happening now. So I don't think that it's fair to compare what Bruce Jenner did in his athletic accomplishments to say like, oh, he needs to be stripped of this and, you know, you should have been Caitlyn oh, no, no, Jenner no. there. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't I necessarily agree with that. Yeah. But I don't think that it's really... And I don't think it's fair to say, too, that, oh, isn't it convenient for you to say this now? I, I don't agree with that because... 
times were different then, honestly. And, you know, maybe Bruce wasn't ready to live in his truth I guess, then. I, want, I guess that's not my... I, I, let me be clear, because now I feel like I'm Tim Scott. Mm -hmm. What I want to be clear is... It's easy now for you having won. You've already done it. You've gotten the crown. You've been the most, you're the most accomplished in that arena, period. So you don't have to win again. You don't even need to compete again. You have no desire to because I've already won it. Now, it's easy to block other people who may want to. I have to believe that there are trans girls who would like to participate in sports. And it's easy for someone who's already won to come out and say, oh, no, you don't get to participate. Well, you've already... Hello. Well, well even, even, yeah. even with that, if they if trans girls or trans men want to uh, want to compete, then they need to create a lane for trans men and trans women. It is not fair. I don't fair. know that. Flame, I don't know the separate fair. is equal though. It or is not fair. Or if we equal. want to talk about equality, just have them still compete in the boys' sports. Honestly, I I mean I, I think boxing is honestly a great model because. There's been several trans boxers that have come out and they're still they're, they're trans women, but they're still fighting men, though. So that way it's an equal playing field, because I don't think that it's fair to say, oh, we need to put them in a special lane because we got to treat them right. like they're special people. Right. It's not we don't need to make a special Olympics for them. We already have that for people. If they want to <laughs> put them in a special Olympics. <laughs> what I'm saying is I think that we can use boxing as a model. And is that if we have trans women that still want to <laughs> compete, let them still compete with men. That's the only way that we're going to bring any oh, equality to this. This is laugh and learn. That's the only shit. way. That's the only <laughs> way. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I just think that they should create a lane for because then it would just appease everybody. You know, I think if people will calm down so they won't say that it's not fair to the women or that it's not fair to the men because they created the black. They, they don't have a black Olympics, but they've created so many different things. When we don't have when we didn't have anything, they created the BET Awards. We didn't have a award. We create everything for everything. They have the Latino Awards. They have the, the, uh, the Latino Music Award. Mm -hmm. So let's just create a lane to be fair for transgender athletes. I know I totally feel that but I just like I said I'm being devil's advocate the whole day I could still see on the flip side somebody saying that that's not actual equality because y'all are still <laughs> trying to put us in another lane <laughs> Nick don't add any more to it we gonna, we're trying to move on jeez come on now <laughs> I wasn't talking about nobody's kid in particular shit so calm it down for y'all be talking oh Flame said I sure did your president said it two, a couple of years ago honey he did the whole movement and everything and he still won so if you want to be mad at me it's only 293 people on here he got 74 million votes now who the most ignorant me or him <laughs> thank you anyway uh -huh. i did i mean we're, we've got about 10 minutes so do we want to get into the voting rights bill and just yeah, yeah. end on some yeah you know some good food for thought oh y'all see is my yeah. hair y'all can't see me i'm here right here lauren the one i'll be taking up all the room and texas Listen, florida no, and sure georgia state lawmakers Texas, uh, Florida, and Georgia state lawmakers continue to introduce new restrictive voting provisions and voter suppressive bills. Uh, they've begun to pop up and advance, becoming law. So the problem is many of these things are different across different states, but they're all um, affecting disproportionately. <laughs> many voting rights advocates believe uh, people of color and communities of color. And this is why I say, and like we said, we're not attacking anybody today at all. This is laugh and learn. This is an exchange of information. And we appreciate the differences of opinion. But it's this right here is why I say when black people say my vote doesn't matter, that is the biggest lie somebody could ever tell you. Because if your votes did not matter, mm -hmm. these legislatures and different state and local governments would not be trying to do everything in their power to suppress your vote. Okay, the GOP has made it clear that they don't care about people. They only care about their own party and what their own agenda is and tax cuts for them and making the rich even richer. So please understand that your need to exercise your right to vote is so vital, especially at this point in time. 2022 and 2024 are going to be such pivotal years for us, and it's going to determine the makeup of this country and what it's going to look like. So please remember to exercise your vote. It is so important. And with all of these laws that are being enacted and put into motion, please still figure out how you can go out and vote please 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 that's pay, all i'll say pay and, attention and, and, ladies and, and gentlemen. lauren so quickly they're doing them so quickly that yeah. people aren't having a time to really digest the information yeah. exactly a lot of it goes back to what allison mentioned earlier which is knowing what's happening locally because all of this mostly happens on the back end of redistricting and gerrymandering districts it is it, when you have states like texas texas is growing and gaining seats 
Uh, it is very possible that Texas will be a major player um, in the next cycles. New York also just lost seats. Um, so there, there, there are different things. We lost one or two leave. here. Uh, yeah. yeah, we lost yeah, we about lost four seats in California. A lot of that yeah. is because people are leaving states like New York and California because it's expensive, right? Uh, and they're going to Texas, which is less expensive. Now they tend to move, or Georgia. They move to places like Atlanta, but it's concentrated. So what, what members who are trying to change up the laws do is they sit there and they say, you know what, we'll never be able to win Atlanta and that county. But So we've got to redistrict so that we can pick up seats here, there and there. And they try to just patchwork it together. But the thing is, though, and I don't I can't speak to Texas per se, but Atlanta, for instance, is what people don't realize. Atlanta encompasses like almost 40 counties. By itself. So people think of Atlanta as just this one city. That's right, not the not situation. You have so yeah. many different counties. You've got DeKalb. You've got Cobb. You've got... There's so many different counties that encompass Full Atlanta. Full Yes. Yes. So that's a little further out. But yes. Is Conyers further out? Yeah. But there's so many different counties <laughs> I got stopped by the police in Conyers. That's why I know what Conyers is. I got stopped by the police. You was about Conyers. almost two hours outside of Atlanta at that point. Uh, um, I stayed a little longer with that police officer than I was supposed to, too. He Lord. wrote me a ticket and I gave him a bill. Oh! Lord. <laughs> So, but we're saying that to say like, so I don't know if Texas is similar, but like I know that for instance, there's a, a place in Houston called Sugarland. There's different um, counties in these Southern states that are growing predominantly. It's us, it's black folks moving mm -hmm. to these counties. And it's those areas that we're really seeing that the need for these voting rights bills, according to, you know, our local legislators yeah. and things like yeah. that. And that's where the gerrymandering is really occurring. So it's, it's the red zoning. They're really strategically looking at, okay, yep. who's moving here? Absolutely. What are these demographics? And that's to also what I'll say is why I have an issue with the census. I know people say that we need to participate in the census and that it's important, but that's also another way for people to figure out how to red zone and red line who can vote where. But so that's, that's how they, say. that's how New York lost seats. People didn't, so New York didn't have enough people to count, so they lost two of their seats because of the, because people, I think it's a catch-22. Lauren, it is, I think that for the sure. minute you put that information out there, those who seek to do harm are going to find a way to use that information for their own benefit, right? Exactly. Um, and so 361 bills with restrictive uh, provisions in 47 states, that's 108 more than the 253 restrictive bills tallied as of February 2021. 43% uh, increase in little more than a month so just since march 24th there have been 361 bills to cut curb or restrict voting from the gop let's be clear all, from all the gop offered, yeah all in offered, yeah all from the gop y'all so need y'all please pay attention they have changed the voting rights in georgia mm -hmm. now they have done florida Hear me when I tell you that I'm believing that Texas will be next and then North Carolina. They are setting it up for 2022 because they are not happy, i.e. January the 6th. Thank you, Stacey Abrams, because I look at the positive on January the 6th. I don't know what the hell they was doing in, in, in D.C. because I wasn't there. None of us was there. We were celebrating in Georgia. We weren't worried about what was going on in Washington, D.C. because the police wasn't worried about what was going on in Washington, D.C., i.e., that's why none of the people who, besides that one woman who was on pushing to get in, got killed, and the, the office, other people were officers, right? When everybody else, police officers, or law enforcement, yeah. Yeah. yeah, they weren't worried about what was going on. They was more concerned about they wanted to be outside in case they riot on the decision of George Floyd with the guilty, guilty, guilty on Derek Chauvin's bitch ass building fences around people's houses who clearly ki committed murders. We got to focus on what's important for us. What y'all saying about this whole the election fraud and what they're trying to do with the Y'all got to make sure, and I'm talking to the voters, you have to make sure that your ID matches up with where you live currently. Everything needs to, they're going to find every loophole they can to cheat to try to make this fool get back in office in 2022. Well, not 2024, but the preliminaries. We got to do our part. We got to stop doing all this talking, mm -hmm. all that. You can't give somebody some water. You can't give somebody a seat. That is irrelevant. Make sure you are registered to vote because we want to complain about I can't get somebody water. But are you even registered to vote to go to vote your damn self? Because you want to go there and start some shit and say, I'm going to get this old lady some water. But don't go up there just for that. Go up there because you are also going to vote. A lot of us do a lot of talking and then don't follow through with it. Make sure all your ducks are in a row because I'm telling you, we cannot survive another four years of the, of the nightmare that we just got through. We cannot as black people, as brown people, as poor people, because it's if you're not part of the 1% of the super rich and super wealthy or they can't control you like they do Tim Scott, we all going to be screwed. Mm -hmm. Seriously. And they're mad about the color.
If you ain't got no money, you are irrelevant to them. So, Nicholas, you ain't got no money, so you can be irrelevant to them because you ain't irrelevant. got no money. <laughs> just, just, just nothing. Exactly. So I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't let you pull a Tim Scott eye. Beat your... Oh, okay. <laughs> You just heard. Spirit. You did you hear? Did you hear? Spirit. Look, did you hear Marcus show up? Nigga, I beat you. Oh, no, I'm just. <laughs> and, and Listen, you know, and I think it's real talk. As a veteran, I found what he said extremely disappointing. Mm-hmm. You know, because yeah, it's just one of those things where um, I, I just I, I expected more. I wanted more from him. I had hope that there would be more from him. Uh, he did you once seriously? Before. Absolutely. You you are you are a son of the South. How do you not know the history and the legacy? He's a coon of the South. How do you He's not a know coon the history of the, the South. You watch the same trial of Derek Chauvin that I watched, Tim Scott. How do you not recognize that people are in pain and that they're Not suffering? even that, Nicholas. Yeah, he was problem. stopped by the police in D.C. and had to show his ID because they did not know who he was. He could have been a victim just because he had his badge. Of, and he real black and funny looking. It ain't like he black and good looking. He black and but funny how looking. Hard, how hard is it? And I'm, I'm not even trying. I don't want to sound sarcastic. How hard is it to have empathy for people? And that's what I don't understand. How you could just dismiss. Nope, there's no reason. And and we're moving on to the next thing. Oh, what? Nick, whoa, whoa, whoa Nick, what? I'm going to say this. this. That's part of the that's part of the game. I'm going to say that because it's almost like we're expected to try and figure out how to rationalize things and how to oh, make things make that. sense. Yeah, yeah, that's right. a part of the crazy merry-go-round that's that we're constantly lighting. on yeah. in this whole I'm going to call it a merry-go-round of systemic racism. That's what it is. We're constantly yeah. trying to figure out and rationalize, well, why did this happen and why did you do that? Stop doing that. It doesn't make oh, sense did, and it's not meant mean to, to make do sense because it doesn't make yeah. sense. So yeah. stop. He didn't mean mm-hmm. to do that. I, no. I must have tripped and fell into that whip. No, nope. he didn't mean to actually do it. Yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. No, yeah. stop. it's not Absolutely. even worth going on anymore. It's, it's really not because it's, it's never going to make sense. It's not. I bet you when Tim Scott looks in the mirror, the mirror turns around. Why? Because he's ugly? No, because of the reflection. There is nothing there. Oh. there that's not even a shell of a man there. That oh. is an empty soul. And I'm sorry to say that. And, you know, I had to, When he was speaking as a black person, because that's who I am, I'm a black person in this country, I was mortified. I was humiliated. Let me. I, and I usually never take on somebody else's, you know, Persona. how you... Yeah. But because I'm black in this, in this climate in America... It consumed me to anger too. When he, as soon as he said that this America is not a racist country, I turned the TV off. But I was so angry. Six minutes later, I turned the TV back on because I just needed to hear the foolishness coming out of this child's mouth. Like, you've got to be shitting me. Mm-hmm. You live right here where I live. You. It has happened to you. He was stopped by the police in D.C. That could have been a very different scenario because there was nothing on his forehead that said that he was a senator. He was just a fucking black man to them, to the police officer. If he would have got the right officer that was having the right wrong day, because remember, that's what the one guy said. Oh, he was having the bad day. Tim Scott could have been murdered and killed. Would he still have spoken like that? His son, if he ever have a son with a black person, his son that, that would look black, because even if he have a person, a his son with a white person, white. If, even white. if the wife is white, that son coming out yeah. black. That nigga is navy purple. That nigga double black. That son coming out black or daughter coming out black. What if your kid get pulled over and accosted by police and they don't ask to say that they see that your daughter's name is Serena Scott or John Scott. They just see a black kid and they just open up and start shooting. Nigga, would your mind and your tenacity and your verbiage be the same absolutely not but she is I, I don't even know that to be true let me stop that because he is so brainwashed and they got him so used and put in a position of foolishness that he might say oh if my son or my kid must have did something bad nigga fuck you and generations of niggas just like you and i said call me because i'm ready for that ass <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah i'm sorry i, I had I to get that off y'all a, as it as, just you know i think that um uh, we've also seen in the last few months, if we had any doubts, that I don't even know that him having senator across his forehead would have been enough. We saw what they did to the uh, military uh, to, to the guy in uniform. Um, and so nothing seems to be enough anymore or has ever been enough. Maybe we thought, well, if I if I speak and I do this the right way that I can avoid this situation. I don't know that that's true in any situation anymore. I think that there has to be. A, a, a complete overhaul in the way that we do policing as we do it today is there there's there's just a problem period and, Regular, and i will say the, the, the woman the first and i know we don't want to go down this dark hole but when they joked about grabbing that woman flame i told you because that woman was bigger black woman and i immediately i 
every time I see this and it just infuriates because I immediately thought about my own mother. And woman was just riding, listening to her music. You know how we do. Sitting there listening to her gospel. What I don't know what she was listening to. Whatever. The point is, you get lost in your music. And so she's like, well, what did I do? That you're pulling her out and you're, and they, they, they just, that woman ain't doing nothing to know. I could see me. That woman was not, she wasn't fighting them. I don't get it. I don't get why everything has to turn out this way. And it's, it's, just, it's just frustrating. It's just frustrating. That's all. Well, I will say this on the policing front, though. New Jersey did just put in a new bill that's saying that uh, police officers are no longer going to get mental distress calls. So I will acknowledge that. I think that that is a good first step. And that's at least I saw the stat of 421 mental health calls com- were coming into the police department per week. So all mm. of those calls are now going to be diverted to social workers and health professionals, police. With the in, skill and the training. Exactly. So police in yeah. at least New Jersey okay. are no longer going to get those mental health distress calls. So hopefully that brings down some of these just police involved shootings well, that we're seeing. Uh, from what you said, Lauren, a couple of weeks ago, you, when you said that you called the fire department first. Yes, always. Some fire captain was just put on leave or fired. I just read this on the Internet before we started live because he was um, – telling his responders who worked for him in the fire department not to respond to the calls that were coming in in black communities, in black neighborhoods. Was he white? Of course he was. Okay. I'm glad he got fired. So He good. was fired or put on leave or some. Some. Good. Mm-hmm. Good. So um, I know we're at our time, so Ooh. I'll just close out with this because I do want to address something that one of the flamettes put in there. Um, I did repost something on my social media. They brought it up saying, what, what are my thoughts on Dr. Umar? So I have a friend, and I've sent it to both of you guys. I think she does parking lot pimping on Fridays. Um, Her handle is at Lanese. If you guys need some good black education, please go and watch every Friday. Um, She has a very vast following now. Um, If you guys just need to be educated on what's happening in the world and then also to just in the black community as well. Um, To address the flame that said that, I wholeheartedly agree with what she said. Nine times out of ten, we always agree on pretty much everything. So I encourage you to go watch her series. Um, that's what I'm going to close out with. So, Nick, what you got? Uh, closing out with, I'm going to close out with, hey, you know, all jokes aside, we talk about it all the time. But we, by the time we meet next time, we will have gone past Mother's Day. And I just want everybody, if, you're, if your mom is still out there or people in your life who have been like a mother to you, just give them a call and let them know that you love them because we know that no, tomorrow is not guaranteed for any of us. So I'm genuinely excited to have one of the most emotional weekends I've ever had in the next few days. Well, I ain't got none of that positive, happy shit. Let me tell y'all something right now. (laughs) May 15th and 16th, get your tickets if you want to see me in Wilmington, Delaware at the House of Laughs. The tickets are still available. Y'all come and see me. I'll be the fat, pretty one. Uh, My only message I'm going to leave to you all is to follow Allison Lewis so we can support Allison Lewis, who's running for city governor. Please, please, please. Make sure that you are registered and all your stuff is legal because I'm telling you they are they by in the words of Malcolm X, they are trying to pull it by any means necessary. And we got to pay attention. Stop complaining and start doing something. Talking is one thing. Marching ain't worked since the sixties. I'm telling you, I ain't ready to march. I'm ready to do something else. What that entails, I don't know. But I'll tell you what, you can't kill me but once. And you can't cancel me but two, three, five, twelve times because I'm gonna keep coming. I'm like roaches. I'm gonna keep on coming back. Fuck you. Uh, thank you guys for joining us for Laugh and Learn on today. Yes, and everybody that's asking me that's saying that they love her, I posted her ad in the comments really quickly. So please go and check out my please good join friend, me tonight. Lene. Lene, yeah, is yeah. it Lenezy? No, it's yeah. I put it right there. Please for you guys. join me tonight for um. Love Lounge at 6.30 p.m. right here on IG. And you can follow Nick Smith on all social media platforms at Nick Smith News. Thank you guys for subscribing to our YouTube pages. You got you guys are raising the numbers. Nick's numbers are going up. Y'all not need to start subscribing to Lauren. She'll never push it. Lauren Hogan, her YouTube channel. <laughs> Lauren Hogan. Lauren just, is the one I'm who puts the up. videos up. I'm she posts the video. I don't, po- I don't even read the comments. I'm telling you, I don't do mm-hmm. shit. I just come and be. I would say I'd be pretty, but I ain't put no makeup on today. <laughs> It's okay. It's a natural glow. It's a natural glow. And, and, it's called and may I just say that you you looked fantastic in Atlanta. We haven't had a chance to talk about that. The white coat and everything that you did there. Or, it was uh, Anita. Anita. She gave real Anita. good Anita. Yep. Come on. I was I was I was Anita uh, Baker's rack. Yeah, yeah Bakersfield. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. You guys were so wonderful in, in Atlanta, y'all. Tipped on the cash app. You joined me in the conversation. Thank you for making uh, Laugh and Learn successful. This is a page where we are exchanging information because what we are not trying to do is what, Nick? <laughs> we are not trying to get anybody to change their mind. 
We are simply trying to get you to use your mind because why flame? If you ain't got one, ain't nothing I can do to help you. I'm just telling you. And y'all get out my inbox and tell something. I'm pushing non-vaccine. I'm not pushing non-vaccine. I tell my people who I mean something to me to wait. Your decision is your decision. And we talked about differences of opinion because last week Nick said he got his. I got mine. Nick, um, Flame is not getting hers. And it is what it is. So come and, on now. And if I start looking like a cheeseburger or a donut to this bitch, I'm going <laughs> to fuck her up. I'm going to let y'all know. If she try to bite me, I'm punching the hell out of her. <laughs> I'm going to throw some water on her like in the Wizard of Oz. I'm sure she will melt. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us. We appreciate you so much. Please follow Lauren Hogan, Lauren Armani H on Instagram or on Facebook and Lauren Hogan on YouTube. Nick, and you are where? At Nick Smith News on all social media platforms. And he be jumping rope and stuff with no draws on. Y'all oh can enjoy that. And you can follow Flame Monroe. Well, it's the truth. Don't it's be making that true. face like you have draws oh, on. Please. I just watched oh. you jump rope this morning. I ain't seen no it. switch draws. No dump, 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 dump. <laughs> And you can follow Flame at Monroe Flame on Instagram. At Monroe Flame, Flame <laughs> underscore Monroe on YouTube. Uh, Marcus Flame Monroe Parker on Facebook. And, yep, you can come to my house and have some greens because Lauren brought greens and we about to eat. I oh, love Lord. you guys. We appreciate you so much. Catch me tonight. Love Lounge. Thank you, Kendall. Thank you, Tribble. Thank you, Flame Match. We could not have this show without you. To all who joined us today, we appreciate you. And Hey, we'll see you next week. Yes, indeed. Peace.